Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. There are some very big things cooking up in crypto right now and billionaires know it. So of course, on this channel, we have to cover it as well. So we can be one step ahead or at least make sure that we buy the rumors, sell the news or don't fall into that trap. Let me just say it like that. Having said that, and this is very important, all right? I'm posting trading updates in Telegram every single day. Go scroll down below and check out alerts or something along those lines, my, my trading alerts or something like that. I highly recommend you guys to join. Uh, get, I got myself actually an entire new team, but for right now, one person is actually posting trading updates every single day in there. Just go ahead and check it out. It's pretty cool. And also, I'm right now working on one of the biggest giveaways I've ever done. I think the number one biggest giveaway ever. So that should also be quite exciting. But you'll hear about that in most likely a couple of hours over on my Twitter when I'm done writing everything down for the giveaway. So as I said, behemoths are doing some crazy stuff. So what's happening? Well, there's two main points, but let's start out with point number one. Kevin O'Leary says he's doubled down on crypto amid the downturn, naming Bitcoin, Ethereum and three altcoins. So, of course, we have to kind of check out exactly what he's holding because, uh, well, I, you know, we like to see that. Kevin O'Leary, if you don't know who he is, Google him. Honestly, is my best recommendation. He's a very well known investor in anything, basically, nowadays. So he says because he has a pretty big crypto portfolio, a double digit drawdown. We took a hit. We were at 20 percent and then I grew up to 23 percent. Then it went down 60 percent of, of the portfolio. It was really volatile, but I have always said you're going to get this volatility in an industry that's not regulated because there's no institutional bid. And that's a very fair point. Bringing us to point 1.5, where again, the SEC is investigating everything right now. And so the regulation could be there sooner rather than later. Uh, then again, an ETF has not been approved. So I guess yeah, he's definitely right. So probably at the low, we were at 15%. We lost 40% of the value. And now we've come back up on some projects and they haven't all come back at the same pace. Big players, the market cap, uh, behemoths like Bitcoin and ETH, like Solana, Polygon, Hedera. In some cases, we doubled down. We took advantage of the extreme volatility and the large cap names like ETH and like Bitcoin. Why not add to the position if you're going to stay long? According to the venture capitalist, the real problem facing crypto assets currently is the lack of institutional participation. This asset class is not correlated with anything as people thought. It's not correlated with inflation just quite yet. But the real problem is it's really a gauge on where institutional buyer is. And right now, zero. They have no Bitcoin. Not completely true, but partially. Bringing me to point 1.7, you know, I said I have two main points, but this is like intermediary parts. Coinbase and BlackRock. If you don't know what BlackRock is, again, use Google, my friend. Cozy up on Bitcoin bandwagon. Now, if you're telling me institutions are, uh, are not in a crypto, but then we read that BlackRock, the biggest institution in the world, right? The biggest fund managers in the world are cozying up to this. And they've said it before. Yeah, that's kind of like a, it's kind of a difficult one, <laughs> you know. So Coinbase and BlackRock announced a new partnership Thursday to allow BlackRock's clients to trade and manage crypto in-house. Honestly, guys, if I had to give a recommendation, which again is not financial advice, but a recommendation on a personal basis, I'd recommend checking out the links down below. Those are the exchanges that I personally use. Uh, but that's because I don't like Coinbase so much. I don't use Coinbase. I don't like it too much. The exchanges down below are the ones that I personally use. So if you're looking for something, check it out. The partnership, though, combines services from Coinbase Prime and BlackRock's Aladdin, with both of which serve institutional investors. Hey, yeah, one plus one. Coinbase stock soared as high as 44% in intraday trading before closing up 10%, which is logical. And the news is a breath of fresh air for investors who see the deal reviving crypto after a tough year. Yeah, I mean, it's quite logical now that um, one of the behemoths, literally the biggest uh, asset managers in the world, are are supporting crypto in, in this heavy of a degree, saying, hey, institutional investors have such interest, let us participate in this and let us make money on this. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to now deny anything and say, no, no, you know, institutional buyers are the problem or anything like that. You, you can, however, say that it's not as big as it's going to get or that ETFs are not open. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not growing as much as we would have liked, but it's surely there. Now, I also wanted to kind of make a little fun note about what altcoins, right? Because apparently, you know, he was Bitcoin, Ethereum primarily. FTX CEO is also way more wealthy, by the way, than um, 
than the guy we both guys we just covered. I think who's well with you, Larry Fink or Sam Beckman Fried? I'm supposing Sam Beckman Fried wins them all, right? Way more wealthy than Larry Fink. I think Larry Fink is a couple billion dollars, but not more than, let's say, seven. Maybe he has six billion, maybe he has 2.5 billion, I don't remember. But Sam Bankman fried probably has 10 plus, 15, 16. So uh, he says one leading Ethereum rival is the most underrated crypto asset. Solana, right? Solana, what else could it be? It's going to be Solana. Point being, though, these guys all have an ulterior motive, you know? Sam Bankman fried big investor in Solana, very, very big. And underrated crypto asset is an easy one to explain, you know. A leading Ethereum rival is the most underrated crypto asset, Solana. Well, yeah, Solana's going through a lot of trouble right now. And for that reason, it's underrated because it's quite good. Um, but it's getting a lot of bad PR. But you got to understand as well, it's getting a lot of bad PR for a lot of bad parts. And that's why I'd like to always state, don't buy into this idea of, okay, just because these behemoths are saying it's good, let me buy into it then. A critical example is this right here, all right? And you guys got to understand, the moment that these guys are hyped and so, you know, uh, okay, so Sam Beckman fried is partially right, partially wrong. He's given the argument that a lot of PR um, is happening that's bad press. And so the logical idea would be to just sell your Solana. You should kind of do the opposite, right? I'm just giving you guys a double scenario, a double-edged sword in the sense that, well, Sam Beckman fried is saying, no, this is very underrated. To me, that's very scary. On the contrary, he's saying there's a lot of bad rep, and for that reason, it's underrated, which is kind of logical. This is a good example, though, of the opposite or the exact same thing. I'll explain. Banking giant City highlights significance of merge upgrade on Ethereum blockchain. Now, we all know that it's important. You know, Ethereum's merge is a very big event. I would say one of the biggest events in crypto to date. But... Is it something you have to buy Ethereum for right now? Is it already priced in or not? It's kind of a more difficult question to go after, right? Is it smart to buy Ethereum right now? Or should you buy it because of this significant merge that is coming up? And that leads me to the point of, well, a lot of these parties are being extremely, extremely, extremely on the side of, wow, there's a merge happening for Ethereum. Things are going wild. Buy it right now, otherwise you're going to be too late. Uh, here's, for example, experts fear Ethereum merge will lead to a civil war in crypto, that is. And it can be explained simply in the sense that, well, Ethereum right now is proof of work, which people have put so many millions upon millions of dollars into. They don't want to switch over to proof of stake where all the mining equipment becomes useless for, uh, for Ethereum specific mining equipment. Then they can switch over to something else potentially, but they might not want to, you know, they wanted to get them, themselves that juicy, juicy Ethereum. And so why is it a, you know, I guess, um, why is it a point for a civil war? Well, the people at the proof of work stage don't want to stop. And people from proof of stake, you know, or I guess the rest of the people want it to, you know, get to proof of stake. How are you going to get there? Well, eventually, if a very big amount of people don't want to switch over, you basically split up. So you can kind of get the same idea as a Bitcoin and a Bitcoin Classic, for example, or a Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin Cash, a Bitcoin, there are so many of them, right? Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, where there's basically a hard fork. There's a split where some people don't agree with the others and you just split apart. With Ethereum, it theoretically speaking could be that they, um, you know, it, it, okay, so let's actually, we have to explain more about how a merge actually works. But let's just say it like this, right? Because officially there's two things coming together for Ethereum to go this way. Let's just describe it like this. There's a good chance that a lot of people are not going to accept Ethereum switching over and they'll just keep supporting this old thing for as long as possible. And you're going to get a divided up community. If the merge, you know, of the mainnet, uh, the merge does not go properly, the entire chain come to a grinding halt because, well, people are just, it's, there's a lot of crazy money going around in this, you know? And it's a very, very difficult transition when a lot of people are opposed to it. So you need a majority support and things to go smoothly. Otherwise, you can really mess up your entire network. And for that reason, I'm like, should you really buy Ethereum right now when you're in the wake of such crazy things? It's a really scary one. But they're trying to say, oh, it's such a big deal. It's so bullish on Ethereum. Such a huge event. So nice. When in reality, it's a little bit more difficult than that. And if we're talking about behemoths anyway, I gotta bring this guy up. Resurfaced video from 2014 shows former Google CEO hailing Bitcoin as remarkable. Now that is juicy. Former CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt, hailed Bitcoin's technology as a major achievement in the cryptographic scene. 
While speaking at the Computer House Museum in 2014, Schmidt noted that Bitcoin's technology is important, but expressed skepticism regarding the asset utilization as a currency, which is logical at that point, right? I can, I can honestly understand very much so if you're skeptical towards it. He stated that Bitcoin's tech setup could power more businesses in the future. Interestingly, Schmidt made the remarks at a period when Bitcoin's adoption was still low across the globe, and his stand can be viewed as a major boost for the asset's prospects. Quote, Bitcoin is a remarkable cryptographic achievement, he, end quote, he said on the panel. The ability to create something which is not duplicable in the digital world has enormous value. The Bitcoin architecture, literally the ability to have these ledgers which can't be replicated, is an amazing advancement. Lots of people will build businesses on top of that, he said. And he was very much right. And he said that uh, you know, eight years ago or so. Schmidt's interest in crypto technology, you can see, generally, Schmidt's take on Bitcoin technology aligns with a recent revelation where he highlighted his focus on the technology technology underlying crypto. He shared his current interest in Web3. He said, a new model of the internet where you, as an individual, can control your identity and where you don't have a centralized manager is very powerful. It's very seductive. Hey. <laughs> and it's very decentralized. Yeah, that's beautiful. You know, that's, that's really beautiful to hear. I, I can't say anything negative about this entire situation. Can't say anything negative about the situation. It is worth noting that over the years, the former executive increasingly advanced his inroads into crypto. For instance, last year, and we covered this, he joined the Chainlink team as the firm's strategy advisor. Um, he also co-authored a specific book, The Age of AI, which is not so exciting, I guess, for uh, the majority of us. But yeah, he knows his stuff. And uh, the video from 2014 is now coming back up and is getting people even more bullish again, which I'm also kind of excited to see. So let me just rephrase everything of the video here. Crypto is advancing at a rapid pace. There's no stop in this, at least in my opinion, there isn't. All you can do is sit by the sidelines and wait or get going, keep reinvesting, keep doubling up. My opinion, right? Not financial advice. A lot of the behemoths know it in the space. You know, Larry Fink and freaking the biggest asset managers in the world know it. If you want to stay on the sidelines, completely fine, but you're going to get left behind. And um, yeah, I think that's it for today's video. <laughs> uh, also, don't buy into fake news or don't buy in just because they say, oh, it's going to be good. You buy in. You know, do your own research, do your own due diligence, and buy in when things are logical. Not because of some heavy event, let me buy now. In a lot of these cases, it is a buy the rumor, sell the news type of environment uh, when big events are happening, if you guys get my trick. But yeah, that was it. See you guys later in another crypto video.